In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to solve one of the biggest problems with the second generation Honda Ridgeline, and that is the non-locking tailgate. Now, this truck does a lot of things really well. There's only really two big flaws that I found, and I already solved one of them. The first one is the rear doors and how narrow it opens, but with a simple hack, you could easily solve that. So if you guys haven't checked out that video, make sure you do so. Now, in this video, I'm gonna solve the second biggest problem, which is the non-locking tailgate so you could lock the doors you could lock the trunk but you can't lock the tailgate for whatever reason but there is a part that you can buy directly from honda that fixes that problem unfortunately it's not a power lock and unlock it does give you a separate set of keys but those of you guys that need that need to lock this this will do it for you and the instructions basically is non-existent even the dealership even at the service counter they didn't really know this kit existed and i had to walk them through so if you guys are interested in doing this check this out i'm gonna go through step by step and also the part numbers for the kit is in the description below for those of you guys that are interested in buying it from your honda dealership yourself all right so let's get started okay so here's a closer look of what you get there is two separate parts you need to get one is just the handle it is a painted handle so you got to make sure that whatever color that your original line comes in you have to match it so that is something important to note uh, you do get a new locking cylinder the keys right a separate set of keys and this new bracket which is definitely necessary and some attaching arms and that is pretty much it now i mentioned the instructions are are non-existent so you do get this information manual very <laughs> very brief inf information manual and in here the only thing it tells you how to do is how to unlock and lock your tailgate by turning the key and that is pretty much it there is no other instructions so um, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to do this first things first is we have to remove both of these covers okay and there is a trick to it to remove this one fairly easy there are four screws over here which i already removed three of them so let me do it on this last one all right now a lot of you guys may be thinking this is one of those pop out types where you're supposed to you know just pry this open that's not the case honda designed it so that it could be uh it could come out by hitting it to the right so just take a rubber mallet or something tap it hard okay and it will come off just like so okay so make sure you're hitting it to the right and when you're installing it hit it to the left and you could see that the tabs are here all right so that is step number one step number two is there are some screws over here 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 that you need to remove to remove this top part so let me do that these are actually torque screws so you can't use a regular phillips head you have to use a torque bit and this one happens to be the the t30 and they fit in here quite well so let me remove these all right so after removing all seven of these it's uh pretty simple you just lift up and it comes right out and this is actually quite heavy now with that cover off the first thing we need to do is install a new handle and we need to remove a few things so let me show you that all right, so to remove the handle, there's basically three things you need to do. One is you need to disconnect the harness for the backup camera if you guys have it. Number two is you see there's a bolt there, bolt there, 10 millimeter bolts you need to remove. And number three is to disconnect this uh, arm, which comes out from the side, like so. Just pry it to the side, you can see pretty easy, and then lift out, and that's it. All right, so this is the old handle with the backup camera. The only thing that needs to be removed is the backup camera, which is held in by two Phillips screws. You don't have to worry about replacing or removing this because you do get a new arm. So just go ahead and remove that and let's put it on the new, new handle. Now with the backup camera all done, the next thing is to put the new locking cylinder, right? And it's pretty simple. You do get this little, little, you know screw holder thing okay so you do need to make sure you put it here first otherwise the screw is just just not go mount all right so just shove it in there like so so next you take the locking cylinder right you stick it in and then you got to make sure that aligns right so and then lastly 
you get an extra screw and then you just screw it in and that's pretty much it. Now after this is installed, you do need to install the new arm. I said you don't need to remove it from the old one. They give you a new one. Pretty easy. Uh, take a look at this side, right? You can see how it's a bit different from this side. So with this side, all you have to do is stick it in here. It goes all the way in like so. It popped in, right? And then you just pop this back on and that's it. Okay, now it's now it's ready to be installed, so just put it back in your tailgate. All right, so now I have the handle back on. You can see the arm is still here, right? Uh, the harness is replugged in, the two bolts are on, and it's good. So let me put the key in the cylinder. And let me show you with the key in the cylinder, you can see this is what's going to lock and unlock. So the next part is to install this bracket, which is really easy to do. Two bolts here, two bolts here, right? 10 millimeter, let's remove those. Okay, so the, the four bolts are removed. I detached this arm because it was kind of in the way. It's pretty easy to put back on, but it's easier to leave this loose for now. And then you take the bracket and it goes like this. Okay, so this arm of the bracket does go below this. Outside of that, that's pretty much it. You could see, of course, it lines up perfectly. So now it's time to put the bolts back on. So this is with the bracket back on. Let's make sure we have all the connecting arms um, back on place. First, with the handle, we remove this one, right? So let's make sure that this goes back on like so. This one I removed because of the, the access to the bolt, right? So let's get this one back on. All right, like so. So with all those connected, the only thing left is you need to collect, connect this bracket to the locking cylinder and they do give you honda actually gives you three of these okay so actually the purple one doesn't really fit um so you have to use the white ones the two white ones here now you do have this last little arm which goes like this so let's do that let's stick this in clamp clamp it and then this one Okay, there, voila. Okay, and that's it. The only things I disconnected was this arm, which I put back, the arm to the handle, which I put back, and this is the new arm we installed. But outside of that, nothing else was changed. The bolts are on here nice and tight. The bolts for uh, the handles on and the backup camera is installed. So let me turn the, the lock here. Ooh, take a look at that. Okay, so this is what tail go back up. I didn't put the panel on obviously, but just to see if it works, this is in the open position and you can see, okay? And then you turn this way and it doesn't open. Open sesame, not open sesame. There you go, that's pretty much it. And then all you have to do is put the, the top panel back on and then the side panel and you are good to go. When I was trying to slide this back on, didn't really go on because these tabs are moving all around. So it's best to remove the tabs and put it on here before installing back on. Unfortunately, taking out the tabs actually take the most time. It took me probably 15 minutes just to do that, but unfortunately, it's what it takes. Also to make sure the side works over here, you can see that this opens and voila. And then when you have this locked, same thing. A lot of you guys might be wondering why isn't there electronic version? There is an aftermarket one that ties in with your normal electronic locking system, but 
it is complicated. You got to run the wire harness all the way to the front and then you have to make sure you splice it in correctly and stuff like that. And the reliability on them hasn't been so stellar. That is why I chose this OE setup from Honda. I trust that they already done the R&D for you. And as you guys can see, the process is really simple. Now, me just trying to do this for the first time, maybe, maybe at most uh, 45 minutes, okay? And that's being conservative. For you guys watching this, you guys saw that it's really just a matter of removing the covers and a few bolts, and that's pretty much it. So only tools that you need is a rubber mallet, all right? You need a 10 millimeter socket, and you need this, which is like a Torx, uh, a Torx bit, which is T30, okay? And you need this to remove some of the screws, but outside of these three, that is pretty much it. Really, you could do this in a half hour. Now, in terms of the parts, remember, there are two parts you need to order. One is the handle itself, which has its color, so you gotta make sure you specify the right one. And number two is the, the everything else that I showed you guys. Roughly the cost between $150 to $175, depending on your dealerships. So if you wanna order, you could do it online or with your local Honda dealership. The part numbers, the two part numbers, is in the description, but remember the handle one that I gi I'm giving out is for the black version. So you'll have to ask them for the different color variants. All right, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you did, make sure you hit the like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for my other videos.